What is up, everybody? It's easy. Easy Street Gaming. Bringing another Brutal Age video. Finally, the last of the three stars. Gonna have three in one video. Gonna be a little longer. Plus, sneak, sneak peek at the newest hero. It's pretty awesome. Uh, what I had to show you at the end of the video. Make you watch the whole thing. Gonna start off with the Bone Fist. These last three aren't exactly the most popular, although one of them kind of is. Bone Fist, pretty tough once you get him to the to the six star. If you can get him that far. <laughs> all three of these partners kind of have similar characteristics. They're, they're all high health. The higher you get their health, the stronger they get. He actually attacks stronger for the, the more hit points he has. His main, his, his main attack is called the Uppercut Punch. It's got a 50% chance to taunt the enemy. That means that if he hits someone, then... Uh, they will attack him instead of whoever they were targeting originally. The heavy punch. This this is one of the attacks that deal damage based on his max hit point. So you get his hit point up really, really high. And you'll be surprised how much damage he does. Last one is called the Dragon Punch. This is after he's throat awakened. I've never actually seen this live, I don't think. But this, ha this has a chance to stun the enemy. And it also deals more damage for uh, a higher hit point. I would suggest uh, Hippo hippo and Whale. Or Whale. Mix those, those two war, war patterns up. Either uh, all six of one or four and two. Blue Bone Fist. Now, you don't see a big difference in these three. Although green is a little different than the first two. I would suggest again, as far as the war patterns go, to go with Hippo and Whale. <clears throat> same same first and second attacks. Once he's third awake and he gets the Will of the Warrior, it just it reduces his damage. I think he also gets uh, the Leader skill. He doesn't get that till the third awake, I think. Now you'll notice that on the left hand, I'm, I'm keeping speed. If you're into the new slow team, which is when you use the green uh, nomad, you can actually put health on all three. Last one. Kind of got ahead of myself. We're gonna set him up a little differently. You see the six star priority low. I I don't see a lot of uh, bone fist at six star. Although I have heard that he d he only attacks one player, and I have heard that he does some big damage on that one. Green does a battle cry, which increases, I think, defense or attack for, for the team. It does have one all enemy attack. It's called the pressure bomb. I guess it at the, that's the green bone fist at the third awakened. It will look it's very similar to. Mr. Dagger's attack. You notice I don't have a lot to say. Basically because every time I've said something bad about a partner, they end up being real good. So I won't say too much. Here's the Berserker. Berserker's been waiting for this ever since. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Red Berserker, one of the first partners you'll get. If you're new, you'll be tempted to take him to all the way up to level 46 star. <clears throat> he does have some pretty strong attacks. The best he has is called the Battle Alliance. The reason why Battle Alliance is so good is because if you do have an elite partner, then he will attack with another partner and you have a chance on, ta on attacking with another elite partner. Anytime you have one of these um, alliance type tags, and you have and you have another big partner, you have a chance on on getting the, your big partner a second attack in with this like team attack he has. Similar war patterns to Bone Fist. I would suggest just getting his health up as high as possible. With Blue Berserker, you'll notice that his he's the healer. Uh, first off and 
probably the best healer out of the three stars, I think. And this is what we're talking about with the slow teams. If you have Green Nomad, you can use the Green Nomad to build a slow team. All of the damage will get, I mean not the damage, all the speed will be lowered down to the Green Nomad speed. So you don't have to use speed on the left hand. And then you can use whatever strongest attribute that partner has on the left hand for the no, for Blue Nomad. Sorry, Blue Berserker. You can get his health up even higher, which means that it, that'll heal even higher. I believe mine has 15,000 bonus hit points and he heals at like six or 7,000 each per t for the whole team. So pretty good if you get him up pretty high. Uh, Green Berserker, probably one of the more overlooked partners. He has uh, the team attack of leap attack. He it's when he jumps up, he does the same thing as Red where he jumps up and hits all partners, all enemy partners. Then he has the March North. This is a restraint type of skill where he'll, he can freeze the other team at the same time he also raises his own attack no action bar and speed so overall blue probably the best healer green probably the best attacker sorry red good utility partner uh, if you don't have elite partners bear paw maybe the strongest of the three would be bear paw Again, an another partner based on health, hit point, health point. I've changed the priority to fair <laughs> because he is pretty reliable as a six star. You'll notice that once you get up in the higher levels in an adventure, the very top two, I believe they have bear paw in it, and he does some pretty good damage up there. Something to look forward to if you have one. If you have some elite lion war patterns, you may want to use a lion along with either two each of the hippo and whale or four and four and two. You'll get a lot of um, five star hit point for, for lion too, so that's pretty good for bear paw. At the third awakening, he has a wild power. He recovers 15% of his hit points, 30% of the action bar every time he gets a critical attack. These action bar boosts, they are huge. It's why the, the Green Desert Prince might be the top partner in the game right now. He, he attacks so many times more than the other team because of his action bar boost. <coughs> Blue Bear Paw, I think all three have similar potential as far as, uh, I know that all three on the third awakening their warrior charge changes uh, he, this is when they charge at the enemy he hits him twice it's based on his maxed health uh, and once it's third awakened it can do more damage based on the enemy's defense so if, if the enemy has a lower defense he'll do even more damage blue bear paw has beat me this is where he'll raise his defense for three rounds and then taunt the enemy so he has a potential to taunt the entire team, which is which is great. If he if you have his health way up there, then uh, and he ends up taunting everyone, then they'll attack him, and it'll be harder to kill him because he has a higher hit point. Leader skill of attack, kind of low leader skills. It's a fifteen percent attack. So when it, when you come in when it comes down to a, the leader skill of attack, you really don't want to use fifteen percent unless you don't have anyone else that you can use. <clears throat> Green, probably the most popular of the three bear paws. And now I've seen his health way up there, probably around 25,000 total combined health. So you can work with that. And he's got the first two skills as the other two bear paw. The third skill, he gets that third awakened, I think. Oh, maybe not. It's called Overwhelm. This is when his own health is higher than the targets. He can deal 75% more damage and inflict slow for one round. In addition to that, he'll also apply speed to himself. So that's a pretty big buff for him. Now he has the leader skill of resistance. And if you don't have anyone else that has resistance as a leader skill, it, I think it might be the best leader skill in the game. It helps a lot with the stun teams if you're up against a stun team. 
Now, if you're using Bear Paw as a leader, you're probably fairly new to the game, but uh, you'll know what I mean soon. <laughs> so, if you're wondering why would you want to use any of these partners, let's go to the top levels of adventure, and you can see how strong these guys can get. Here you have, uh, it looks like you have Bear Paw on the left side, and you have level 41 green berserkers on the right. And there's Bear Paw, took out a level 41 uh, shaman one shot. Here's the leap attack, which is an attack all from the green uh, berserker. Not huge damage, but it definitely uh, not a weak attack. And I wasn't able to put all of the partners in because I don't have some of them. So about 5,000 damage on the Bear Paws uh, dual attack. And I didn't, uh, we're not going to go too far into the attacks with these three partners. They are three stars. A little behind schedule. Uh, could be a government worker. I think I'm like three months behind schedule as far as getting these out. But moving on to the four stars next. Not next video. Next video we're actually going to the, the live duels. A lot of stuff going on with live duels. Haven't been able to show anything on it yet. That will be in the next video. I've got some great matches. I've been saving these matches now for about three, four weeks. I do have one, ma one match at the end of the video. I want to show exactly what the little tyrant can do. If you haven't got your interest peaked in it yet, and you've been trying to work on cert on on an elite team, I have a potential elite team that might just top any other team. I don't know, because I, I can't I can't personally make it yet. Anyone with certain partners may be able to. I'll, I'll explain it here in a minute. So. Green Berserker not able to break the shield from the Catfish Fighter. Catfish Fighter probably a top 5 partner. I know a lot of people may argue that, but he gives a shield at the end of every one of his rounds, even if he's restrained. And it's a really big skill. M maybe with the hardest one-on-one -on -one partner to beat. I'm trying to steal the show from the, from the Green Nomad. And you, if you've noticed, uh, Green Bear Paw has pretty much murdered every single person he's touched. He's one of the game's favorite partners too, so I'd expect big things as he moves on. I don't know why they favor him so much, but they do. They don't tell us how much health the computer's uh, partners have, but if you're watching, they're doing, my guys are doing between two and 4,000 or 5,000 damage. And it's taken like eight or ten hits to get in, so they got about twenty thousand hit points. So you can get you can get berserkers hit points pretty high up there. Remember, all of these partners are all high high health hit points. First look at the at the red bone fist too. He's got that uh, that big punch right there. I think there was twenty thousand damage in that. Hard, hard to survive. Most, most partners won't survive 20,000 in one hit. So, Red Bone Fist takes out two partners. And now, look at this. Catfish fighters constantly giving Green Nomad shield, and these guys aren't able to break it. It's based on the catfish fighter's health. His health is so high that 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 shield is way above what any of these guys can do. This is how one partner can steal the the attack from the whole team. I 
I wanted to put the Green Nomad in as well because we were talking about the slow teams and I think it's a pretty big benefit in the game right now. I know that a lot of p players will build their teams based on speed, trying to get their speed up as high as possible and there's a lot of competition as far as high speed teams but you put the Green Nomad in, you lower everyone's speed down to his speed. So if his speed is at 105, now everyone's speed on the whole team, on your team and the enemy team is at 104. And now you can actually change the way you build some of your partners and you don't have to put the speed in the left hand. And if you, and let's say if you have an attack partner and you have attack percentage on your head and on your right hand, and you're able to put attack on the left hand, well, you've just added about 33% more attack. So that's a, that's a big jump. If you're not going to use, if you don't have Green No Matter or you're not going to use him, then the speed team, the slow teams are going to be hard to build because everyone else will get the, when you get to the, to the big matches or the bigger players, if they get the first round of attacks off, they're probably going to restrain you for the rest of the match and you're not going to get much of a chance to win. So it's really important to try to get the first hit in and try to get the first round of hits in as well. And here you've seen, now I know that, uh, Bonefist is the only one in the video that we're that's supposed to be, and I'm watching you. Everyone's getting to watch him get annihilated. So the the three star, three Bs, Bear Paw, Berserker, Bonefist. I wouldn't put them in the elite category, but they are definitely worth building. And if you get them to six star, level forty, you, you might be impressed by some of them. I don't know. So little tyrant, newest partner. We're getting him in this uh, the brutal event. Blue has a scream of terror. Basically, what he does is he turns all the buffs and debuffs into poisons on both teams. He really um, takes advantage of of some other other partners like uh, the drum beater that gives like four or five buffs to his own team. So little uh, the little tyrant will take every single one of those and turn them all into poison debuffs. So let's say if they have five debuff, five buffs, he turns them into five debuffs on his first skill. Now, if they have five debuffs each, and he happens to get this next round, it's called Trample. He stomps on the ground three times and adds two rounds to every poison debuff, along with enhancing his own attack. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well. You may not you may not see it right away, but all of your elite players know exactly where I'm gonna go with this. There are certain partners that take advantage of the debuffs. Little Tyrant himself will get he gets fifty percent more damage for each poison the enemy has. So if they if they have a bunch of them stacked up, he's gonna do a lot of damage on that trample attack. But the actual potential is in another partner called the Tree Man. Red Tree Man's Elderberry Branch adds 50% of damage for each debuff on the on the enemy team. Um, he's got the largest recorded attack. It was like 185, 190,000 damage on the entire team. I believe that record's about to go through the roof. So here's a clip from the live match. I paused this the area that I wanted everyone to check out. Unfortunately, Tree Man didn't get off the attack. I, I wish it did because this would be a little different video. There's the triple stomp. That added a couple rounds to everyone that has poison already. And several of the partners do poison. You can see that the buffs and the debuffs are stacking up. There it is right there. That's the, the, ter the Scream of Terror. You'll notice here, times 14 for the Dragon Man, times 12 for the Demon Killer, times 11 for someone else, times 8 and times 7. I mean, there's this huge amounts of damage that would have been done by the Tree Man. Typically, he does about 8,000 damage for the Elderberry Branch. That would have been 8,000 plus 4,000 times 11 times 12. It's going to be crazy once we finally get uh, this recorded. And um, I'll bring it to you as soon as I get it. Appreciate everyone for watching. Subscribe to Easy Street Gaming. Help me teach the kids. No matter how old they are. Um, here's Dirk. Again, thanks everyone for watching. Till next time, it's been easy.